Hello, this is Jeremy Hung from Hung Electronics with a random video, but uh, maybe a response to a comment I got this morning, um, which I don't get many of those, which I'm fortunate to um, not get. Uh, I don't even call this one a negative comment other than um, probably a disappointed uh, potential viewer of the channel or a subscriber of the channel, although I'm not here to chase subscribers and such, I'm just here for documenting my own experiences in video and uh, I mean you know all of you guys all the audience here is just here for the ride right but um no um <laughs> let me let me pull this comment up um I'll put it on screen and post editing here but uh yeah so it was something along the lines of wow that was like a waste of 30 minutes I learned nothing or whatever I, I forget like I have such a short-term memory with this um, oh yeah, here it is. How to spend 30 minutes saying absolutely nothing. Wow. Which I, in response, said, yeah, it's just me rambling, which, what do you expect to to a video that is titled Discussion Slash Rant? And then, yeah, it's Ham Radio's Future, where do we go from here? Um, I tend not to re-review my videos because I can't bear to hear my own voice. It's like one of those things where, um, yeah, I just, I just can't listen to my own voice sometimes, so that gets really old quickly, and so I just immediately turn off the video, so, um, <laughs> all I can say to this comment is, um, that I'm so sorry that you had to spend 30 minutes hearing this voice, <laughs> but holy crap, <laughs> so I'm just, I, I don't know, I don't, I'm unfazed by this comment, like, uh, I kind of wish, like, right, some people would say that, oh, it should be more constructive or something, but, um, I mean, I'm just, I just kind of took this as is, and now I'm making this random video that might be 30 minutes on purpose. So anyways, I need to try to find some things to talk about that, um, that either I've been working on or just random, just random crap that I could think, just think off the top of my head without saying a bunch of ums and ahs. And you know, all this, all the weird speech things that I kind of add between, and 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 also maybe mumble. Um, so, anyways, yeah, actually, let's start with this. So I have this loop antenna here, um, and uh, yeah, I've been just I just play around with this indoors. Uh, hopefully, this never gets next to my head while it transmits. Although I don't really use this for transmitting at the moment, unless I'm outside. Uh, but no, this this is a decent um, loop antenna. Um, what is it? It's like the Spartan Six or something from uh, oh man, oh god, uh, was it Radio Waves? I think is what the company name is. Um, is like that. It's, it's kind of based off of that design, but uh, yeah, that it, it works really well. This is actually what um, led me to regret not buying a loop antenna or looking into loop antennas earlier because man do they work well indoors and this would have been really nice when I first started out as a ham um, or at least when I first started doing HF in 2018 with my uh, FT991A that <laughs> unfortunately sat in the box for like uh, four years so um, until I moved here in Florida and yeah um, but now, now I know, right? And so, uh, if if there's one takeaway you can get from this video for anyone who is just kind of like starting out in, in ham radio and maybe getting starting to get into HF, but um, are kind of not uh, as familiar with a lot of the antennas or kind of overwhelmed, and also just trying to determine uh, what kind of antenna you want in your setup for either like an apartment or just limited space where like you don't have any trees, like in the case of my last uh, rental house that I was at, um, what is it, like having a bunch of power lines around you and no trees to put antennas up on. So uh, yeah, loop antenna would be the best, unless of course um, there's a bunch of interference sources nearby, which you might have to chase down and then, you know, handle those one by one as, as one would. Uh, if there's anything power company related or like you know with the power lines then you contact the proper um authorities at the power company or uh 
the technical support. Um, as far as I know in Florida, uh, FPL, Florida Power and Light, I think, uh, has a pretty responsive team. Um, although at times they can be uh, sporadic or sometimes a way doing something else because it's apparently just one team for the whole state of Florida. And of course, right now, uh, on the western coast of Florida after the hurricane, uh, was it her um, yeah, just, um, I think they've been overwhelmed by that. But yeah, um, again, uh, if there's one thing you can get out of this 30 minute video of randomness, get a loop antenna. Um, I will say there is probably, uh, it's probably better to DIY something like this because it's a little bit cheaper and also, I mean, there's plenty of instructions out there to build one. Uh, if I'm trying to remember, I think there's one by, is it OH? ASTN, yep, yeah, OHATSTN it has has a design that you can probably run with. Um, I think that's one I've actually recommended in the past, but uh, for me, I was like, needed to go to tour camp, um, and what, this was like, probably like three weeks ahead in advance that I decided, oh, let me just pack a loop antenna and uh, see what happens, and before then, before leaving for the trip, I tested it in this room, and I was shocked at how well it did, and I was like, man, I should have just had one of these loop antennas this whole time. So, yep, that's, there's one takeaway, it's that. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so some other things that I've been doing recently is, um, I think I posted like a very short snippet of the FT710, the Yeezy radio that I just got. Uh, last week and been having a blast with that uh, on FT8 and uh, other other things. It's uh, it's kind of hard to believe actually that now the software defined radio based uh, transceivers are actually becoming more mainstream like this, and now they're like in the within like the top ten list of uh, high performance receivers and such. Uh, and yeah, it's it's kind of nuts because when I first started out. I mean, right, like most hams nowadays, this is just kind of the standard thing now, where you buy a Baofeng and then an RTL SDR dongle, and you know what, like all together, all said and done, hopefully around 50 bucks, get you started as a ham. And uh, yeah, it's hard to believe that, um, yeah, the software defined radios have really taken off, like, like at least when I first used one with the RTL SDR, it was, that in itself was a like game changer for me. Like, I, I don't think I could have uh, become a ham at a better time than when those things were starting to become very popular in, what was it, like 2013? Um, it was, I still remember it very vividly. I might link this down below, but it was uh, one of the guys from Make Magazine. Um, oh man, I'm trying to remember his name. Bad with names, of course. Uh, he he actually posted a video about the RTL SDR and like you know how like a bunch of really really smart hackers and DIYers figured out that oh you could turn this um, TV dongle into a pretty uh, nice uh, soccer defined radio that uh, thanks to the um, kind of like what was it uh, some of the features in the uh, the uh, real tech chip right. Uh, that they were able to figure out that, oh, if you twiddle a few registers and also kind of kind of look here and there, I mean, look, look, you get data. You get the raw, raw signal data, right? The I and Q. Um, but yeah, that's, it's incredible now, like what, uh, kind of brushing up on some of my history recently. So I think it was the, the Elecraft KX3, which is the, um, did that get released like was like 2013 or 2014 i think even um that was like one where they first kind of experimented with uh sdr front end as like kind of as a approach to one miniaturizing the uh transceiver and also um taking advantage of emerging technologies kind of quoting the video from wayne burdick uh but yeah like now that this has become mainstream like what was it? I'll never forget, but like, I think it was like Contest University in 2017 or 2018 timeframe. Uh, and then around that time, the 
uh, IC7300 got released and that was like a big game changer and I was very tempted to to either go with that or it, or with my ultimate decision which was the FT991A which is I didn't regret that choice the 991A was a nice radio to grow into and I still still have it and it's still um, despite even having the FT710 of course uh, the 991A has VHF and UHF um, uh, the transceivers also so um, at least you can you can use it um, in that regard as a nice base station for both VHF and UHF whereas the FT710 is just a HF 50 megahertz transceiver yeah so um, what else what else in this random 30 minute video uh, yeah, so I got the FT710 running. Um, I don't know, like, so I guess this was kind of like my way of celebrating 10 years of being a ham, but, uh, right, so I, like, I got a KX2 uh, Elecraft transceiver, and then with the FT710, like, uh, yeah, these are, let me tell you, every time I now open up QST, or, like, recently when I opened up QST and I'm, like, Oh, look at that full page ad by Yezu and then a full page ad by Ellercraft. I'm like, damn, I have that radio. I have that radio also. And then it's, it feels pretty good to be quite honest with you. I didn't think that, uh, was when I first started out in the hobby, um, subscribed to AWRL and QST that, uh, I would ever really make the jump into HF and then own one of those radios. Yeah. So looking back on that now, it's like, wow. Um, yeah, and I credit a lot to, uh, what was it? I mean, all the, all the hams, all the good elements along the way, uh, getting me into this. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a wild ride. Um, and it's, it's been, <laughs> it's been really beneficial for my career also. Cause, um, it was one thing that I'll tell even young folks uh, or the youth, right? This is definitely a skill or a um, license you want to put in your resume because a lot of times some of the questions on the exam, especially on uh, general and extra these days, those are like actual like real RF interview questions. Um, yeah, it's like, it's, a, it's kind of a big deal. Um, if Like I even told some of my coworkers from uh, previous jobs now I'm still in touch with that like, you know, if they ever um, are interviewing RF people, like the the question pool from the extra class is a great, um, like kind of like sanity check and also a good uh, check on how skilled maybe an RF engineer is. Cause there's actually like VNA questions on there on S parameters, you know, what's S12, uh, S21, S11, right? You know, return loss, all that. So, uh, you know, what does it mean? Um, yeah, and of course, because it, the hobbies, I don't want to call it quite, an, I mean, it is kind of a niche, right? Because, I mean, you hear hams all the time left and right saying the hobby is dying and the youth aren't really getting into it. But, um, I don't know. Um, I have obviously have a very skewed perspective because I kind of was set on this path of DIY electronics. And then it just so happened that, um, having someone in my robotics club that, uh, I think was a little bit younger than I am, um, was kind of uh, enthusiastic about ham radio. And I was like, what is that? Like, um, and I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's quite interesting. There's like a really nice DIY aspect to it. Like, you know, un un until I made that epiphany, I would have like just never, <laughs> never made the jump into the hobby. But once I realized that they were all one and the same, I was like, that's, that's for me. I I'm going to do it. And so, you know, in high school, got my uh, tech in general, passed both exams at the uh, same session, and then a year later got my extra. And um, so I'll tell people the ex the general and extra privileges stayed dormant for the next uh, what seven years until I bought an actual HF rig. So yeah, it's um, oh yeah on that on that point, right? So it's definitely something that I highly recommend putting on a resume, especially if it is an RF job or EE job that pertains to RF or even, or even hacking because um, wireless RF protocols, kind of that knowledge kind of goes hand in hand with 
ham radio in. Of course, the most um, was most licenses ever uh, awarded um, in a single session or over like three sessions was at DEF CON. So, so a very very pivotal part as I always kind of evangelize within the hacking community and ham radio communities that um, yeah, there's both both sides kind of stand to benefit from one another. I mean, ham radio operators, especially the DIYers, are kind of the OG hackers. Um, I mean, I look at or like Steve Wozniak building heat kits, hacking all sorts of hardware when he was young. And then, um, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's just so many countless examples of people, you know, who started out with heat kits and then, um, you know, that, that key period of time during the seventies and eighties, you know, started computer companies and then some did hacking and everything. So it's, it's a very pivotal part. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, 16 minutes, we're doing good so far. Uh, yeah, so anyways, yeah, Elecraft FT710, which is not pictured here, it's underneath this phone right now. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've gotta say, it's a, it's a good time to be a ham. Cycle 25, ramping up already, uh, what are we at, like, 50% more sunspots than predicted, and... Oh yeah, I can I can see the results. Like right now, I'm I have the uh, FT710 on 10 meters right now, and uh, yeah, we're getting we're getting lots of hits on FT8 right now. Like uh, all all you need is a nice dipole antenna, or in this case, or even a loop, right? And you can you can do a lot right now. It's uh, I I will say I kind of lucked out again. Man, it's it's almost as if it were meant to be that I got back into HF right when cycle 25 was really starting to ramp up and i've i've been riding that way real good um it's it's really helped because uh some days because uh i'm i'm kind of now have this really like uh i don't want to call it religious but like a very very like habitual thing where um i'll just like check the the band conditions every day and then, you know, just kind of like compare that with what I'm seeing on my receiver or what I'm seeing on Whisper, FT8, you know, all those, all those data points on PSK Reporter. Um, try to see if uh, I, I can benefit from it. And um, yeah, some days before I started really getting into the habit, uh, when I put my uh, two antennas up, for a moment I thought, wow, why does 10 meters not work? Or why does 15 meters not work? Like, you know, a lot of the high higher frequency bands and within HF, HF of HF, uh, why, why some of those weren't working. And as it turns out, it was just cause, oh, either that day, the band conditions were great, you know, solar flare just hit earth and just wiped out all the high frequencies on the upper end of the spectrum. So yeah, uh, as it turns out, no, it, all it does take is a couple of wire antennas and you're good. Uh, I don't know, it might be a few, few months to um, okay not months that's a little too soon a few years till i get a couple of beams up on the tower uh not really ready to make that jump yet um i do own this house so and with a nice backyard but i really tall trees so well always find a way um yeah so let's see um oh yeah what happened what do i have in front of me i have a raspberry pi 4 that's like unobtainium right now keeping a couple of these close making sure i don't let go of those <laughs> easily um yeah that's that's one thing that's been kind of shocking during this uh was it last two and a half years has been the price of raspberry pi is like damn i am i am shocked they're they're truly unobtainium and uh Man, it makes you really wonder what um, the next disruptor in the market is for single board computers. I guess we'll see soon. Or, I don't know, Raspberry Pi 5? I, I forget what the recent news is. Um, let's see. Yep, so I'm still very active on Twitter at Electronics by JH. And uh, I, I, I currently have a Mastodon that's ramping up to uh, for the inevitable collapse of Twitter, just just being prepared. Um, kind of sad that I'm gonna 
leave, uh, or if, if Twitter collapses, man, I have a bunch of followers now, so that it, it kind of sucks that, um, I was kind of like on this upward trend and now it's just gonna, poof, kaboom, gonna just kind of explode. Uh, oh well. So, that's how Silicon Valley works, right? It just kind of comes and goes. All, all the big tech companies. Yeah. Um, let's see, what, are, what else am I working on right now? Let's see. I mean, I mean, trying to learn Morse code. So like, you know, here's my straight key. Here's one of my iambic keys. These are, these both are like the Amazon specials you can get for like, what, like 30 or 60 bucks. And I mean, they work, they work well enough. I mean, I'll get a Bugali key or something at some point, a straight key or a uh, set of paddles. I'll make that um, three or $400 investment for what once. Okay. I'm going to reward myself with a Bugali key, set of keys or paddles when I am up to 20 words per minute. I'm going to make that my self goal. Um, otherwise, I really like this was American Morse equipment, uh, AME, uh, portable paddles have really nice feel. I, yeah, I think I only got these because they were highly recommended by, uh, other QR peers and, um, yeah, that's, that's why I had these, but, um, yeah, <laughs> try, try to make the push in the Morse because I build a bunch of QRP, uh, CW rigs or, or uh, radios only and um yeah it, it kind of helps to know cw when you built the cw rig right wow <laughs> uh put put was it putting the carpet before the horse <laughs> yeah um yeah jumping a few extra steps ahead which that's another pattern that i always Okay, I'll admit this, right? Like I did in my DEF CON talk, though, right? I, I'm really bad at just jumping into something, spending a bunch of money, and then... Um, oh crap, I can't use any of this because... It's either because, in, in my, the case of the radios and antennas, I just don't have a place to set it up. Um, or, or at least at that time, it was like... Damn it, I should have thought of loop antennas. Someone, or I should have just asked. But um, that never... That never really came to mind at the time, and uh, I kind of regret it. But at the same time, man, the uh, the trendiness of and fed half waves, though, and how simple they are to set up, um, that was nice to um, kind of catch that when I got back into at least trying to do HF last year because I was like. Oh wow, I've never heard of this, and it's why wow, it's really simple. It's just a wire you throw up into a tree. You know, with my lacrosse stick, just throw it up into a tree, and then, yep, you know, and like holy crap, it works. It was it's very shocking, shocking at the time. Um, that was at least when I learned the beauty and simplicity of HF in that regard. That wow, it's, all it takes is just a wire in a tree, a really tall tower. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see what else. Okay, so I have a TX6 field mixer from Teenage Engineering. So one of my guilty pleasures in life right now is Teenage Engineering equipment. So the synthesizers like the OP1, which I originally got the OP1, um, the OG OP1 back in 2018 after uh, cashing in on a settlement check from a um, what is it? It's the, um, what was it? After all the unsolicited telemarketer calls, oh, the TCPA uh, Solomon check that I got, which was like a hefty sum of two grand, but got, um, spent half of that on a OG OP1. And then, and then I sold that uh, last year to get the OP1 field. Or actually I got the OP1 field, uh, one field first, and then I sold the OP1 after I was like, I don't, I don't need this anymore. I like the OP1 field. It has USB-C. Um, it has a lot better, I mean, I don't want to call it better. The, the, uh, the change in instruments is nice, nicer. And um, it's, it's just, again, it's like, because it's a new thing, it's new and shiny, it's really fun to play with. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. Um, like, I, 
I really didn't get to spend as much time with my OG OP1 as much as I wanted to, but I mean, they're, they're really fun since, uh, like, Teenage Engineering makes some good stuff. They make some good functional art pieces that, um, are really good, like, you know. Uh, what got me into this originally, right, was, or actually, it was, originally it was the, uh, Swedish House Mafia music video for the song One that, that has the OG OP1 in it, um, I'll never forget, I think when I was really into, um, at the height of when I was, like, a, a Swedish House Mafia fanboy, um, I was, I, w I would watch that video every now and then on YouTube, and I'm like, man, you know, if I make it one day as an engineer, I mean, that's gonna be, like, one of my first purchases, like, big purchases as, um, like, kind of, like, to splurge in, and, you know, kind of marked that in 2018 that, oh, wow, I made it, <laughs> by OP1, so... But no, um, yeah, actually the first Teenage Engineering product I bought was uh, one of these pocket operators. Not this one specifically, it was the, um, it's the rhythm one, it's the green one with like the sewing machine. Now, the, and the, these are, these are fun. Like they're, one, they're not like, they're not like the normal Teenage Engineering products where these are not like a thousand bucks a piece. These are like, uh, what, anywhere from 50 to $70. And uh, I have all of them now. Like, I mean, that's, that's just what happens, right? Um, it's one of my, again, it's one of the few guilty pleasures of my life that I get to kind of splurge on as an engineer, but also still relates to the hobby and stuff of DIY electronics because synth synthesizers and DIY electronics kind of go hand in hand. Um, yep, shout out to uh, Thea Flowers and um, what was it Winter Bloom, her company. Make, make great synths that you can build uh, for Eurorack. And yep, that was, hmm, that was quite a leap of faith for me, but uh, she's the reason why I got, finally got into Eurorack because, uh, yeah, it's, that, that adds up real quickly and it takes up a lot of space, let me tell you. I just have the one single row of like, what was it? Um, I, I forget, it's like 60 uh, HP like where was the horizontal spaces or whatever yeah um yeah i have one of those and yeah they, t they take up a lot of room <laughs> but totally worth it especially with uh her uh synth it, it makes them really nice uh was it it's a nice uh juno 106 inspired uh synth so yep love that um what else let's see we got oh, we got two minutes and 20 seconds in counting um, yeah, so anyways, let's see, uh, Orlando Hamcation's around the corner, can't wait to go, got my ticket when the Melbourne Hamfest was here, and, uh, Orlando Hamcation folks were here selling tickets in advance, got it immediately, can't wait to see some of the, uh, Dayton folks there from Dara, uh, it's been, what, like, since November since I last saw them, so can't wait to see them again. Um, I don't know if I'll get lucky this time because, um, again, like last year, I'm going, kind of going in with the expectation of not really wanting to buy anything because, again, I have a bunch of stuff, too many things, too many projects to do, so little time, but I don't know, maybe get another deal like, uh, the $400, uh, BB60C Spectrum Analyzer, uh, this thing, uh, hilariously enough, when the price for this MSRP went up by another four hundred dollars. Well, it's like thirty six hundred dollars brand new. But yeah, this was this was an absolute steal when I saw it in the corner of my eye when I was walking around the flea market with uh, the current club president of Dara, uh, Jack Gerbs. And yeah, um, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it! Like um, that's the same exact spectrum analyzer I use at work, my last job, and I've seen it on. A couple of other systems that I can't talk about, but anyway, yeah, it's it's a very capable um, spectrum analyzer that, uh, like, for four hundred dollars, what a steal! Like, I had to buy it at that point because I'm, I love the interface for it. It's so great. It's, um, it's definitely overkill for hobby stuff, but it's just something that, like, you know, again, I have usage. It's like, huh, makes me wonder what I'll find this year. Hopefully, a I'm gonna hold my hopes out in this last, uh, what, 15 seconds I have? Maybe 
a Copper Mountain DNA. Maybe. Anyways, uh, my 30 minutes is up here in 7 seconds. Uh, this has been a good time. See ya, folks.